Yeah. Um, yeah, real quick, you know, obviously we know why we're here with, with the move with Steph. Uh, first, want to thank Steph, you know, four really good seasons, you know, um, when we traded for him uh, in the COVID year. And I uh, really appreciate everything he brought to the team. It was a big part of, you know, us winning four divisions. And um, these moves are never easy, very hard, um, not made overnight, anything like that. Um, but anytime you make a move like this, uh, as I said, very difficult, you're, um, you're doing it, you're trying to win. And sometimes people may not see that, um, you know, this is by no means the Bills giving up or trying to take a step back or anything like that. Everything we do, we're trying to win, um, and we're going to continue to do that. It's, you know, it's April the 3rd or 4th, whatever it is, and uh, we'll continue to work on this roster and make sure we're ready to play uh, come September. We're spending the offseason really getting out of salary cap heck. Um, you add what could potentially, according to reports, $31 million to your salary cap this upcoming season. For some, it seems that this is a parting of ways, a necessary parting of ways, um, that you couldn't wait until next year that perhaps Stephon and Warno is welcome. Is that fair? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think – I think we just want to get into a, um, appreciating when we had stuff here, the years we did. And, again, it's – you don't want to get into every reason you make every move. Um, it's not one thing with any player. You know, we've traded other players here. We've acquired players, him being one. Um, you know, everything you do you think is the best decision. Um, and you make it uh, – you, you weigh the pros and the cons of every decision like this, and we don't take it lightly. Um, but you're always making it in the best interest of the Bills, and that's that's what we're trying to do here. And, uh, you know, we made the move. Did, did, uh, did Diggs' camp ask to be traded? Yeah, no, I, I, I would like to leave it that, you know, we've always had good discussions. Um, Adisa uh, Bakari's his agent, very good – relationship with Adisa, I've known him for a number of years, very good agent. And he and I have always had a great relationship of dialogue about everything. And so, um, and that's that's continued every year that Steph's been here. And, you know, I'm sure it'll continue as long as we have any players that he represents uh, here going forward. That's probably um, the best way I would like to leave it. Two years ago, we were sitting here with Steph's contract extension. What changed from those two years ago to now? A lot can change in two years. Anything. I mean, you just think of – look at rosters, Catherine, from three years ago to now. Look who was on our roster. Look at – you know, you, you're you always doing what you think you need to do at the time, um, you know, whether it's um, um, getting his deal up to, to the market. Um, the receiver market drastically changed – that year when we did that move. And so, you know, he was coming off, you know, another all pro season and, you know, at the time and, and we just, we felt the timing was right to do that. But um, a lot of things can change with, with a, a number of players in two years or, or three years. Um, talk to begin on moving digs and what led to it happening today? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, if you're going to move a player, you know, um, there can be plenty of times it's, you know, it's not the first time we've been called to ask, would we move him, you know, even prior to this year, you know. Um, but you discuss it, you know, when you get calls. And um, there's been plenty of players that have been called about that never got moved that we discussed and just felt like that wasn't the right time or that wasn't the right value. Uh, I think with this move um, – you know, as we're talking with, you know, Houston in this case, you know, the last couple of days was, you know, the value seemed to make sense and the timing um, made sense, you know, for them and, and for us. And um, we worked on the deal and it got it finalized today. The timing made sense. What do you mean, the timing? But you said the timing made sense for the move. Uh... The timing is the value that, you're you're being offered for the player versus what you think is is fair, and you're you're always looking not only at this year, but you're always looking in future years as well. So you you have to consider all that. Like, 
a coach's job, let's just say, is to win every practice, win every – I want to win all that too. But part of my job is to also keep an eye on, on what it is. And, and I think we all know what we walked into this year, this league year, with the salary cap and where we were. Um, and while, yes, we'll, we'll eat a little bit this year, it frees over $27 million off of our cap and gives us some more flexibility uh, in the future. How would you describe the relationship between Stefan and the organization at the time you guys made this trade? I don't think any – I would say the similar – similar to, you know, last year or probably year before. I don't think – there's nothing any different. Um, you know, Steph kind of does his thing. He does the fashion stuff. And, um, you know, he's – I know he's been back training back in the U.S. I would say in the off season, I probably talked to Adisa a lot more than Steph. But we spoke this morning. Steph and I did great conversation as if he had just walked out of here, you know, yesterday or day before. Um, so, very good conversation. At that point, there were, you know, you were always essentially defending his passion and his fire on the field. Did any of that end up factoring into this decision? Just kind of, there was perceived discontent sometimes with Derek. It feels like every offseason we kind of went through this cycle. Was that a factor? I would say, Catherine, um, I think as I was saying earlier, like, you're always putting everything into there, but... Uh, Steph's a very competitive guy, and um, I wouldn't want to change that for him. And, and I don't think that was something that when we acquired him, I think we were very aware of his competitive nature. Um, but, yeah, again, when you make a decision like this, it's, it's generally, you know, unless someone broke the law and did something very bad, it's generally not one thing. Uh, you just – you're making the decision and you're considering all factors – you're getting different people's viewpoints. You're weighing all the pros and cons. It's not like there's all pros to doing it and zero cons. And obviously we did the move, so it's not all cons and no pros. You're, you're looking at everything. You weigh it. Uh, is it easy? Heck no. Heck no. It's hard. Um, you know, sometimes in this seat you got to make difficult decisions. And what I would, you know, let everyone know is – it's not lightly. It's not. It wasn't easy, um, but it was with a lot of thought, discussion, uh, conversation. You know, at the highest levels of our organization, and um, it was made what we believe was the best interest of the Bills. And I don't think I, we can go around and around. I don't think I could frame it any better. You know. Certain things need to be kept in house as far as how a decision was made or what all factors specifically. Um, I think you just have to trust that this decision was made in the best interest of the Bills going forward. Did you talk to Josh prior to the move? Have you talked to him since the move? And I guess what have those conversations been like? I have not talked to him since the move. Um, no, he probably he was on the West Coast, so it probably woke up to – you know, whenever that move went down, he might have been asleep. But um, I'll circle back with him. But, you know, Josh and I have a pretty regular conversation on things. And, and I think it's important for me to make sure if I think something could happen to make sure he's not blindsided. And so I would, you know, without going into the discussion with, with Josh when the last time we spoke was I did alert him that, you know, there had been some inquiries, and it wasn't 100% off the table. Impactful has been digs to Josh's success in the past four years. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've been really good duo. You know, you'd have to – I mean, I don't remember – I don't think Steph made an all-pro before he got here, um, and he made multiple and some pro bowls in there too. And, you know, Josh ramped up as well. So I do think uh, when they were – when they were clicking, the games they were clicking or, or the seasons they were really clicking, um, you could say they were probably up there with most any quarterback receiver. And when, did, when did Houston first reach out or vice versa to start this? And when did it really get serious? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say it got serious. You know, there's, there's always dialogue with different teams reaching out. I would say it probably got serious um, this week. Yeah, not before. As a follow-up, he was a high-value player, targets and catches when he was here. How much confidence do you have in the group of Shakir, Samuel, Kincaid, and Knox to 
count was on these opportunities now? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, the years that Steph's been here, he's clearly been our one, right? I think we can all agree to that. Um, I think it's it's more of a a volume, you know, a, a variety of guys. We obviously, I'm not standing up here today saying, look, I've got another one to walk in the door, and we know we're still working through the cap. So, um, you know, from an expectation standpoint, I wouldn't anticipate, you know, I'm going to walk in here in the next week and say, look what look what we've got. I think we do have a lot of confidence in our offense, in the other players, whether it's receivers, the two tight ends you mentioned, the backs. Um, and listen, we don't play games until September. You, you know, I would hope you know by now I'm going to turn over every stone and our staff is to continue to look to add um, depth and competition to all those rooms um, so that when it's time to play, that we have a team we're proud of and that's going to go out there and give us a chance to win. Talk about his role in the offense from a leadership standpoint, obviously. You know, we would talk to him about what he's telling DBs, what he's telling special teams. He's one of six captains to now be found this offseason. What does this mean kind of from like a leadership standpoint, a chemistry standpoint, when he's had that kind of role for the team too? Yeah, you know, um, that's a good question about the leadership, Catherine. It's um, is due to – you know, some of the business moves we've had to make even prior to this one, um, it is going to look different, the C's on the chest next year. And um, it's a good opportunity, though. I, you know, I know from my time in Carolina there were, you know, a Luke Keekley and a, and a Cam Newton weren't looked in those roles, and they ascended into those roles and some of the, the, the young players. And so, yes, it's – you can, you're constantly evolving your roster and your team. And so just like those guys had a chance when they were younger to get the C on their chest, whether it was, you know, Jordan Poyer, uh, Mitch Morse and those guys, it's an opportunity for some others to step up. And I think, you know, coach and, and the locker room will be watching, starting with the off-season program, who's leading um, who's going to take over in, in some of these position rooms? Who's going to, you know, we know Josh is going to be, you know, probably the spear, the tip of the spear. But, um, you know, who's who's going to kind of marry along with him the way some of these other guys did? But it, it'll be a great opportunity. And, you know, we believe we have some young leaders on this team that will have the opportunity to show that they're ready for that, you know, that, that C. How do you navigate the next few weeks with other people knowing in the league that you're probably going to be looking at wide receivers. How do you handle that? Because I guess you can't necessarily be coy about it in a way. Like everybody kind of knows that you just said you're losing your wide receiver one for the last several years. So how do you approach that? No, I mean, we'll just uh, – there's still veterans out there. We'll, we'll still look and see if there's someone that would fit. And then we'll we'll do the same, Matt. We'll, we'll grade our draft board, put it up there. We'll – Put them in the order we see them. At if you're talking about just receiver position, we'll have those lined up. You know, we're not gonna at 28. You know, if all our first round receivers are gone, and the next guy is is well into the second round, but we have other positions, we're gonna take the other position. Like we're not. Um, you still gotta take good football players, and even if we don't get the player that everyone is looking for in April, it doesn't mean there's not other ways to do it. We have to remember the roster building is always continuing, and we need to make sure this team's ready to go when we get done with training camp, and that's the goal. Would you love to have all 90 guys as soon as the draft's over ready to roll and that's all you're doing? That's probably probably be easier, but um, it usually doesn't work that way. Sometimes after the draft, someone drafts a high receiver, if you're talking about that, and they're like, you know what, we could – we can go cheaper there. Let's move on from this guy. And so we'll continue to monitor even after the draft. No matter what happens in the draft, we'll continue to monitor um, who's available now, who's available after the draft. And, and again, maybe it's at other positions too. It's about making our offense the most dynamic we can, and we'll continue to, to work to do that. What, why uh, was a future pick the more attractive option? Well, I mean, I would love to have gotten a great pick this year. Um, but, you know, I think you have to look at what 
how teams value whatever you're trying to trade. And um, that was the best move for us. That was the most value. Um, and, the, and it was a value that we thought, we thought made sense for us. I think it's when you get this close to the draft, Joe, I mean, we're talking a few weeks away. People have done a lot of work, and it becomes harder and harder to move on from this year. I think it's easier for someone because they know, man, I got 12 months to work on refilling that pick. So I think that's probably the best way to describe it. I totally get what you're talking about in terms of future years, but as fans kind of work through the emotions of this, like fans of Stefan for the last four years, what would you say to them if they ask, how are you better in 2024 with him on the roster, still counting against your cap in 2024? Yeah, I mean, are we better today? Probably not. Yeah, we're, it's, a, it's a work in progress, and um, we're going to continue to work on that. I would just hope that people know I'm as competitive as hell, and I'm not – I ain't giving in, and we're going we're gonna to work through this, and we're going to continue to look and – I'm confident in, A, the guys we have on the roster, and I'm confident, um, you know, the staff we have upstairs that that helps me that we'll continue to find pieces to add and that we'll be ready to roll when it comes time in September. Just to clarify the, the, the salary cap situation, so, so all this falls on this year's salary cap? and it's, it's John, it's basically adding – yeah, it's, it's adding – you know, we were roughly before this move – Seven and a half million, something like that, on on the cap. This is going to take off three three. There will be a little offset, which will get maybe closer to four by the time you add a player back on, whenever that is. But um, so it pulls us down into the threes of cap space, and um, so we don't have a lot of room. Uh, you know, we we will get money back in June uh, when Tre'Davious is. You know, I think that's ten two or ten three. I don't. Don't quote me on that, but it's something like that. But, yeah, we'll still have to save money for the draft picks, um, replacement costs, uh, practice squad, guys like that. But, um, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll be creative. We'll, we'll, we're still going to look. Um, it's The cap flexibility is more next year, which can help you even in the following year, depending on, depending on what you do or you don't do in 25. You have all day you didn't know for sure whether or not you were going to trade Steph, but him being such an player how were you able to mesh your off-season plan in terms of building the roster on the if come you know you, you don't know if he's going to be here and he's such a at such an important position and the money and the captaincy and the whole thing how are you able to get started back you know six weeks ago mm -hmm. and still try to maneuver in case this happens and be as possible, or if he's still on the roster in September. Yeah, well, I think you're you're weighing both. I think it was very important for us to add a couple guys. Matt Collins is a veteran guy. I know he's not been a one, um, but he's played meaningful snaps and had some good seasons, uh, especially when he was with the Raiders with with Derek Carr. You know, one of his the better quarterbacks he played with. Um, Curtis Samuel, we've talked about him before. So we did try and add some pieces that would, you know, if we didn't trade Steph, would still mesh with him different skill sets. and um, But also with the flexibility knowing that if we did do the move um, at this time, we'd have to hold enough space um, to do that. So that's kind of – you do you plan for everything and you're always trying to make the best decision. And so I couldn't have told you – a month ago, we were, you know, we were definitively, you know, open to moving Steph. But, um, you know, we went through the discussions that I listed earlier, and we got what we thought um, was was the right value, and and decided to pull the trigger. In January, this wasn't a situation from your perspective that you wanted to strip down and, and start all over. But with some of the moves you guys have made, moving on from a few veterans now trading digs does seem like maybe steps in that direction. How do you reconcile that statement with some of the moves you guys have made so far this offseason? Uh, I would say it's not September, and I'm going to repeat that. And every team is a new team. Every year is a new year. And 
you're we haven't even had the draft yet. And so I don't think it's fair to assess what the twenty twenty four bills are gonna look like, right? And so let's it's April the third, fourth, again, what April the third. We play in September. So uh let's be patient and let us work through this. Was it easy? No. But you're always, if you make the best decision for the Bills going forward, that's, that's all you can do. You can trust that. And so this organization and our fan base needs to trust that we're going to trot out a damn good team come September. And that's our plan, and that's not changing. Stefan Diggs, uh, is there a possibility that you look to uh, go younger and possibly draft multiple receivers this year? Well, did you hear me on Pat McAfee? I said we're going to draft one in every round. You didn't hear that? Pat. You don't like Pat? I, I like Pat, but he's a pretty good guy. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, yeah, I mean, listen, we'll, um, you would love to say, hey, there's going to be a, you know, a, a really good – you know, number one receiver or number two, you know, whatever it is, um, faulty in the draft or, you know, a veteran come available that you're like that that can you can fit within your cap. So I think we'll continue to look at that. We I think we could still add one of each or a uh, couple. We're not done, and we may add at other positions in different ways. So we'll continue to look. And again, um, I would just say be patient. Let us let us work through this. And, um, you know, we believe when it's time to play football, we'll have a team that can, that can challenge the same way we've been challenging the last few years. Thank you.